here from that sort of stuff you can begin to infer identical genes, totally different environments, yet share behavior. Aha, we've got to be seeing some sort of genetics going on here. And the whole identical twin separated at birth is a very powerful paradigm. Once again, with the confound of just how different are the environments, nonetheless this approach has given all sorts of hints of aspects of heritability, genetic influences on behavior. And these have mostly fallen into three realms, and the Ruzis are one, so there's no, only three areas, but nonetheless they are three areas that set up all sorts of red flags. First one, performance on IQ tests. And you notice that's weirdly the word in performance on IQ tests, as we know amply by now, performance on an IQ test does not equal intelligence. Multiple intelligence, social intelligence, things not tested for, cultural biases, your test. Forget intelligence. Even how you perform an IQ test, that is one hell of a label that you can get in lots of societies. Okay, so estimates from these identical twins separated in birth that there's a non-trivial heritability to IQ numbers. Next one, introversion, extroversion. One of the more stable features of personality out there, which studies usually show is one-year-olds who are introverted, who are reactive to novel environments, are at more than chance likely to grow up to be introverted adults. Extroversion, likewise, this seems to be a very stable personality trait. Interestingly, with all sorts of disease implications, certain diseases that extroverts versus introverts differ in their propensity towards, and what the identical twins separated at birth studies show are some non-trivial degree of heritability there. The third area, and this is one that is real relevant to the last bunch of lectures in here, degree of aggression. That's kind of interesting too. We will come back to that one in great detail. Okay, so this approach suggesting that take two individuals who are genetically identical, separate them at birth, 40 years later bring them back into your lab and they have all sorts of behaviors in common. Those behaviors have to have some genetic component. And this was summarized in this classic, perfect cartoon by Charles Adams, the guy who found the Adams family in his cartoons in New York, it was back when. And it shows these two guys, and they're sitting in these two armchairs in what's clearly a waiting office. And you can see on the door there, out by the waiting office, you can read backwards through the glass there, it says something like patent office. And these two guys are sitting there, and they're both dressed identically, and they're both wearing like hip waders and bizarre water whatever is in weird plastic clips on their shirt and they look the same and in their laps are sitting both identical these two bizarre little gizmo machines for no obvious purpose and the two of them have invented these identical machines and have shown up identically dressed in this patent office with the legend at the bottom the Malifert twins separated at birth meet by chance and this was the notion of this twin separated at birth, the identical twins. You see a similarity there, and you're looking at genetics. So what are the caveats we've got for now? Okay, if you find something genetic, does that mean genes are determining? Not a chance. Back to last lecture. Most